Hello, YouTube. All right, we got another piece of technology on my uh, my operating table, that being uh, the floor. <laughs> well, examination table, I should say. But here we have a Sony DVD player from probably the late 90s, early 2000s. My guess on this thing would be 1999 to 2001 in the range of when it was made. Let's have a good look at it here. It's made by Sony, as is clearly indicated. Get your on-off button. You got an IR sensor here for the remote. You have headphones here in case uh, you just want to use this as a standalone um, thing with sound on there. You got VES. I forget what VES is. I think it does something with the sound. I can't quite remember. If any of you do remember, please uh, leave it in the comments for other people so that I'm not a misinformed idiot. Or at least not as much of one. <laughs> you got a logo for Dolby Digital, you got DTS, and Compact Disc Digital Audio. And the Dolby Digital actually has an indicator light right there, which glows blue on uh, certain things. You get a shuffle button, a program button. You got the tray, of course. Repeat, clear, the eject button, previous and next, play, pause, stop, and you get your DVD controls over here. Title, DVD menu, return, and the control here is a jog wheel, which I think you actually have to press this jog button here to use the jog wheel, as it's intended, and you have uh, a D-pad here, which is a nice D-pad. I actually really like this D-pad feels good in it. It feels really nice. It feels it feels kind of like I wish certain game controllers did, <laughs> to tell you the truth. So I just find it a little ironic. Now, here's what it says. Here's the model of it. It's a CD slash DVD player. It's a DVP S5, S530D. And here is what it says on the front. It plays DVDs, CDs, and video CDs. Now, this thing is a gem for the video CD part. Uh, because this thing will be perfect for transferring old video CDs from the 90s that were actually professionally pressed. It has 10-bit audio conversion, and it can do 96 kilohertz, 24-bit digital audio converter. Or it has one, I should say. So it, it's, pretty, it's a pretty decent DVD player, Ow, at its time. It's got a uh, pretty typical power cord, polarized, polarized at one end. What I thought was funny is that the DVD player itself is black, but the cord is gray. That's a, that. That's why I said nine, possibly nineties. Oh, there might be a date code in the back. I haven't looked. All right. All right. Here we have digital out. You get optical and coax for your, uh, your digital audio in case uh, you have a receiver that takes digital audio. You have uh, S Link control in, which I think is if you had a rack mount system that had a central control unit that controls everything. You get your typical line out, you get analog, left and right, and composite, and S-video, as usual. You get component video out as well, which I think on, the, on this particular model is just going to be 480p or 480i, since uh, this is, you know, just the, the dawning of LCD TVs and plasma TVs being affordable to the general public. And it has a dedicated 5.1 channel output, which I think is really nice. So you get your front and rear speakers, and you get the center and the woofer, which is really good for those receivers that actually take the separate ones, which a lot of times, let's say you had a Sony, Sony receiver from about the year 2000, they would have those inputs in them. Whereas some of the newer ones, like, like let's say a Bose uh, surround sound system, uh, sometimes they don't have that. Sometimes they just use HDMI or... Uh, they just use regular all analog audio and use matrixing to decode it and et cetera, et cetera. This actually uses just full full on discrete um, connectors. Let's see if we can find a date code anywhere. It says nine D right there. I don't know what that is. It's got the the copyright for Dolby, which is nineteen ninety seven. I guess that's for uh Dolby Pro Logic and AC three. There you have it. There's the sticker on the back. Uh, and I guess that's the serial number right there. It uses 16 watts of power. It's not that much. Let's see if we can, can't find a date code on the bottom someplace. Nope. It's rather bumpy on the bottom, though. 
But yes, this is in fact just a plain ass DVD player. Something that's hard to come by anymore that it's actually as decent a quality as this. Rather than those like cheap Memorex ones you can buy at Walmart or at Radio Shack. This is still a good one. Now I'm going to be using this as a CD player in my audio setup because, uh, well, it's the perfect size and the perfect component for it. And it's going to cost me absolutely nothing to use it. it this thing didn't cost me a thing. This, this used to be a DVD player in our house. It sat on a CRT TV for about 10 years. And then we got ready to move. Uh, turns out we didn't move, so this thing was wrapped up with all the stereo equipment. I unwrapped it a couple of weeks ago. And we already have a carousel CD player downstairs for the main stereo setup uh, for speakers that are throughout the house, and we didn't need this thing. So I figured that I could use this as the CD player. And uh, we'll put it in my setup and give it a good test. Okay, I've got the DVD player hooked up right there. Just got plain old audio going into this Radio Shack switch box. Now I know I've seen people complain about this Radio Shack switch box before and how unpure it is in my setup, and it t they're they're right about that. I mean, it's not the the most high end thing in the world, but the whole point of it is for me so I can have multiple sources to go into aux on the receiver. The only thing that sucks about the switch box is this. Let's see if I can make it do it. That's the only thing about it. Sometimes the contacts aren't completely, you know, secure, but that's the only thing about it. It doesn't actually change the sound at all. All it does is direct the sound to, an, to somewhere else. There's no capacitors in there. It's just direct line to line. It's not electronic at all. It's pure contacts. And B is the CD player, so we'll put it on that. And, uh, all right. Got some CDs here someplace. Uh, what else do I got? Okay, I got some WMR stuff. Got some Nirvana. Gorillas. So we'll test a couple of different CDs on this thing. Okay, I think first we'll start with Gorillas. So. There you go, a factory pressed CD. Now first turn the thing on and see how it operates. Turn on the light glows green, Sony DVD. Now when you have this hooked up to a TV, it gives you a little splash screen and everything. And there's that Dolby Digital light I told you about earlier. Now watch how strong the tray is after 10 years of constant open and close. The tray's still very strong. And the belt doesn't sound worn at all. Let's see if it picks up the disc. Yep, picked up the disc. So let's turn the rants up a little bit and jam out. Let's go to track three, which is a de facto standard for me as far as uh, stereo testing goes. Kids with guns. Excellent sound quality. That has really good sound quality. And one feature I like about this is when you pause it, you can actually just resume it. Watch. That's when pressing stop. Because it's a DVD player, it has these features just all throughout the entire system of how it plays the disc, so it's really beneficial to have that, instead of just pressing pause and keeping the CD turning. That's very fast. The laser in this is extremely responsive. Let's jam out a little bit. Yeah. 
it's there. Great classic Gorilla song. For those of you who don't know Gorillas much, the album is Demon Days. One of the best albums of the last decade. I de definitely recommend picking it up if you don't have it. Okay, so a factory press CD like that does sound good in here. Let's test another factory press just for good measure. Nirvana, Incesticide. What's on the back of here? Silver, Men the Sun, Son of a Gun, Downer, Aneurysm. There's some good ones on there. Open, damn it. There you go, very 90s looking CD. All right, what song should we do? I say Silver, track two. I like the bass. It's very deep, but it's not overbearing. Out of the digital audio uh, converter in this DVD player. And here comes the rock and roll. I think this is a remastered CD, unfortunately, and remastered equals butchered as far as sound mixing goes, and there's a lot of hyper-compression in this mix, so this is a very bad example to use, but there you have it. <clears throat> the mix of this album is very bad. <laughs> Thanks for mastering. Recording studios, learn how to mix better blocks. Now let's take a CD I burnt at work years ago. It's a, uh, a transfer of... Uh, a reel-to-reel -reel tape of WMMR 93.3 from 1978 off of a reel-to-reel -reel deck. I recorded it with this particular Revox, which itself actually needs some work. It stopped being able to record. Anyhow, let's give uh, let's give some reel-to-reel -reel transfer sound to test through this thing and see how uh, that can sound through the digital audio conversion of this thing. I don't know if you can hear the laser. It's kind of struggling. Come on. No disc. Well, ain't that nice. This is one of those CD DVD players that cannot detect burnt CDs. It's that old, apparently. That's kind of irritating, but at the same time, it's not that big a deal because I have a computer. So I could store what's on that CD on the computer or on an iPod or something and play it on there. And... Honestly, I'm okay with that. That's not a big deal to me. Uh, but still, that is really annoying that it does not play burnt CDs. It might just be a certain type of burnt CD. I'm not sure. We'll find out because I'm going to test a few other CDs on here. We'll try the same CD that I uh, played on the Bang & Olsen CD player I had about a year ago. Which appears to be a CDR, but you never know, it might actually play, I'm not sure if it's just limited by the laser or not. Yeah, the laser's still struggling, you can hear it going wah, 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 in there. Yep, as far as CDs go, it looks like this is going to be a CD player that's only meant for pressed conventional audio CDs, which is kind of annoying. Stupid CD cover, get in there. I still find that really annoying, but it's still whatever. I mean, I'll find another CD player at some point, but for now that will do. At one point, I need to find one that will play burnt CDs. Now, the funny thing is that the Bang & Olsen CD player from 1985 could read and play the burnt CDs. I mean, it had some issues someplace. You could hear it, you could hear a little bit of artifacts in the sound as it got to the end of a burnt CD, but other than that, it could play them just fine. And this one from the year, from 1999 to 2001, cannot play burnt CDs. Now, that I think has to do with the fact that it, it's a DVD CD video CD player. 
It's not meant for just CDs. I bet you if I took a, a regular CD player, it would play them just fine. But since this is multi-purpose, it's probably just not optimized for uh, uh, the playback of those burnt CDs, which is a shame. I mean, it'll do. It'll do for now for pressed CDs. For burnt CDs, I guess I could just use the DVD drive in the computer or listen to them digitally on the computer or another device. Um, other than that, yeah. That is the Sony DVP S S three fifty D. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.